This video is brought to you by PCBWay. And that's a UV Vis spectrometer I designed and built. It's a proof of concept. You will see in a minute why. The most complicated part of a spectrometer is a monochromator. It starts already with the lamps. A deuterium lamp for the UV part and a tungsten halogen lamp for the visible part is used to obtain the full spectrum. Various lenses and mirrors are often added to this. I wanted to eliminate all the optics and the expensive lamps, but how? Well, LEDs emit an almost monochrome light and are now available in a wide range of wavelengths. So why not mount a bunch of discrete LEDs on a ring that is rotated to the required wavelengths by a stepper motor? But wait a sec, how do we get a full absorbent spectrum if we only have a bunch of data points? The answer is interpolation. Ok, once that was all sorted out, I started modeling the spectrometer in CAD. As usual, I first modeled the parts like the stepper motor, sensors, cuvette, etc. and then moved to the 3D printed parts. The housing and lid were printed using an FDM printer with ABS at solid infill. The remaining parts were printed using an SLS printer with PA12. I use a flow-through cell for my spectrometer to carry out continuous measurements. This allows me to use it in a flow injection analysis device, for example. I use the AS734 as a detector. That is an 11 channel spectral sensor with 9 photodiodes, which have different sensitivities for wavelengths in a range from 350 to 1000 nanometers. I cut the trace for the onboard LED, as it has no use here. That is an M5 hollow screw to feed the wire through. A slip ring prevents the wires to the LED ring from getting twisted and breaking.
This fork light barrier is used to bring the LED ring into a defined initial position. Next up was the LED ring. The ring currently features six LEDs with a wavelength range of 390 to 628 nanometers, but many more LEDs could be added. The LEDs are controlled via a 4017 decade counter, so only four wires are needed, plus 5 volts, GND, clock and reset. The LEDs are not driven directly by the 4017 but by N-channel MOSFETs. This ensures a constant brightness. In the next iteration I would like to make the LED rings easily replaceable using a plug-in system. This way you can use different LED rings for specific tasks. And then I found this problem. The nose of the LED ring was touching the cover. Since I had already designed the main board in the meantime anyway, I headed to the website of my favorite PCB fab, PCBWay. PCBWay not only offers PCBs and PCB assembly, they also offer 3D printing in many different materials as well as CNC machining. All super fast in an outstanding quality and very affordable. After I had uploaded the STL file of the lid and the Gerber files of the PCB and configured them accordingly, I hit the order button. Only one week later, the package arrived. The main board is designed as a shield for an Arduino Mega. It features a TMC2208 stepper driver, a 320x240 TFT display, a mini joystick and a regulated 5 volts 3 amps power supply for the electronics and the stepper motor. Now that the hardware was finished, I started programming. 
I spent a week just writing code. The graphical user interface and the interpolations were time consuming. In addition to cubic spline interpolation, I also implemented linear and Lagrange interpolation. In the end, the code had over 1000 lines. The graphical user interface currently features a photometer mode, a spectrometer mode and the interpolations. Since an extremely large number of settings can be made, I have dropped the plan to make this via the graphical user interface. They can currently only be made in the software. Let's take a look what happens inside the spectrometer during a measurement. This is spinach. No, we are not making a salad. We are extracting some chlorophyll B for our first test. Ok, the graph has to be normalized so that the minimum touches the x-axis. That can be done by increasing the integration time and the gain of the sensor, or by diluting the solution. But otherwise the result agrees with the absorbance spectra of chlorophyll B. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Stay true, stay you.